Hi everyone, this tutorial is a tutorial where I'm going to show you and teach you how I do my serge and quilt jelly roll design. It's a, it's a process, so we'll just call this a process video of the class that I've taught out on the road in the past year. So I think that you might enjoy it. It's very easy to do. Yes, I'm doing it on a serger, but if you don't have a serger, you can also do it on your sewing machine. So let's talk about what a jelly roll is. So right here, I have a few different jelly rolls. These jelly rolls that I have right here, this one, this one, and this one, these are about three inches wide. And then I have a smaller one that I've gotten from a different store. It's about two and a half inches wide. But these are jelly rolls. So when we open up one of these jelly rolls, let me show you what it looks like. Here I have one that I've opened up. You're gonna find that you've got lots of different prints of the fabrics. Typically, you know, they can all be a little bit different. You might have two or three repeats of a fabric print in that jelly roll. And that's what makes it really great for this type of quilt that we're, I'm gonna share with you. So here again, I've got just lots and lots of different prints already cut in strips for me. Now I've used quite a bit out of this jelly roll for a different project but you will have lots of um, variety when you grab a jelly roll. So this pattern that I've designed has a lot of interest. It looks very scrappy because I've taken and I've incorporated different strips from the jelly rolls before I've placed them together. And we'll find all of that out in the process video as I continue. But here's just a, a nice little look at what we're gonna create. So this was the one that I created in this size for the class that I've taught, and it's a little bit smaller. But if you want a bigger quilt, you can definitely try to, you can definitely use this design and keep going and going and going. So if you wanna make it bigger and bigger and bigger, then definitely buy a couple of jelly rolls and that way you'll know that you can have enough of those strips to continue forward to however big you might want it. Now my design is a square design. I start with a square in the middle, but if you wanted to do it rectangular, then you can elongate this pattern for a bed size. This quilt is also reversible. So what you're gonna see on the front, you're also gonna see on the back. That's just an added little extra in this design. Um, let's talk about the binding a little bit. Now on the binding of my project, I created a wave stitch. It's something that I can do on my serger. But if you want to do a traditional binding, you can definitely do that. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the comments of a serger binding that I do. I take and create a traditional binding and I attach it with my serger. Note that video down in the comments. So you can click on that and also watch that. The first thing I do is lay out my jelly roll. I take it apart and I take the different pattern repeats and lay them on top of each other. That way when I start pulling from my jelly roll, I can just make sure that I'm alternating the prints. And here I have my center square. So I have the square of fabric, a layer of batting, and another square of fabric. And we're going to quilt that. This is actually a way that you could do the center square without piecing the center square. In just a moment, you're gonna see me piecing the center square. So you have two different options. You can just do that solid square in the middle and do the quilting on it, or you can do this technique that I'm gonna show you now. So this is my center square of batting that I've cut. And again, I'm auditioning the strips of fabric. I'm just laying them on top of the center batting that I've cut. And that center batting is a nine and a half inch square. I wanna make sure I have a bit extra because having a little bit extra is important because when we serge these jelly roll strips together, that's going to shorten up the width of our strips. So I just wanna make sure I have a little extra enough to cover the whole center square of batting once I get started. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and see how long my jelly roll strips need to be to actually extend above and below the square. So I'm grabbing my first strip and I'm just giving it an audition above the batting. So there I'm gonna have enough for one side and I'm gonna bring it up and over and then again estimate a generous, 
probably about an inch below that bottom. That way I know this long strip is going to be enough that I'm going to piece together to cover the front of the batting square and the back of the batting square because this is going to be reversible. Now you'll notice when I look here, I'm kind of comparing the second strip and I realize that the fold of the strip is just a little bit longer than where I cut the first strip. So just to make it easier on myself, I went ahead and took all of these strips and just sliced them in half on the fold of that jelly roll. I like to try to save fabric when I can, but that's just a wee little bit. So it just made it a lot easier to go ahead and cut all of those strips on the fold. And you'll notice that I'm just setting aside the other side of that jelly roll strip. We'll use that later on in the project, and if not in this project, it'll be ready for us for another project. Now I'm just going to, again, I'm just positioning these strips in the order that I want to serge them together. And you'll just want to place them together in, a, in, a, in an area in a way that just makes you happy visually to your eye. I tend to not put two dark ones together. I, I try to mix it up a little bit. So I've actually set my serger up for a chain stitch. Uh, the chain stitch is me using one of my cover hem needles and I have the blade locked down on my serger so I won't be cutting anything. So my serger is actually going to be stitching like a sewing machine would when I use that chain stitch. Again, this is a serger class that I was teaching, so we had all sergers set up in the room. So I'm always trying to uh, find out how I can really complete a whole class using whatever machine that we've designated for that class. Earlier you noticed that I was showing you the right edge of the presser foot. So I have the C2 needle in my machine, and I'm just, I was just showing you that I'm going to allow the right edges of the fabric just to guide along the right edge of my cover chain foot, which is the foot that I'm using on my serger. But keep in mind, if you want to do this on your sewing machine, you can definitely do all of this on your sewing machine also. Now I'm going to stitch all of my strips together. So I'm starting with the first one of those jelly rolls, placing the second jelly roll right sides together, stitch all the way down, then I'm going to go ahead and grab my third strip. Once again I'm going to place it right sides together. I'm just going to continue to keep the right edges aligned to, the, to each other and serge all the way down. After I finish the third strip, then I'll continue and grab each additional strip until I have all of those strips sewn together. It goes very, very quickly. And then once we have all of our strips together, then we're going to look at them. We're going to give it a press on the back side where the seams are. We're going to press them all in one direction. So here you'll notice I've already pressed them in one direction, all of those seams. So it's going to lay nice and flat. I'm going to fold it in half because remember we're going to have, out of this, these strips that we just surged together, we're going to have enough to cover the front of our batting and the back of our batting to make a quilt sandwich. Here I'm just laying that batting piece on top of the strips. Once I folded them in half, just to give myself an extra little look to be sure that I have plenty of fabric. So once I folded it in half, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut along the fold to cut them apart. So now we'll have two squares. We'll have the top of our quilt sandwich and the bottom of our quilt sandwich. And then in a moment, you're going to see me place that batting in between those two squares.
So now I'm going to flip, flip them over, flip one of them over so I can see the back side, the wrong side. And then I'll place the batting in the center of the square. And I'm going to position it to where I see fabric on all four outer edges. So we should have enough fabric to where we can just generously have enough fabric along all four outer edges. What's going to be nice after we get our quilting in there, then we're going to square it up with our rotary cutter and our ruler. And I'll tell you right now, I forgot to I forgot to actually video the part where I was actually quilting this piece. But I'll show you a, a finished picture of it already quilted in just a little bit. I'm going to quilt this with my serger. So in a moment, you're going to see the serger, and you'll notice that I have placed my curve foot right there I have my curve foot on it's a shorter foot and this is a closed foot so what I'm doing here is I had already had my serger threaded and so when I placed the curve foot on and I took a few stitches it just it actually locked the stitches around the foot so I just grabbed my little snips and gave it a clip and then just continued forward now here's my square I've already quilted if you look in between the jelly roll strips you'll notice the curving quilting pattern that I placed in between each one of my jelly roll strips I've also trimmed all four outer edges. Now it's time for us to start gathering more strips to create the next side on our block. So I'm going to find three strips that I like together. So I'm just kind of going through my jelly roll strips to decide which ones I want. So here, here are the next three that I decided upon. And if, if you have trouble figuring out which ones you want to grab, just close your eyes and start grabbing them. And then whatever you come up with, those will be your next three. So here we go, we've got all three of those. Once again, we're going to place these strips right sides together. So we have three strips right sides together. I've now set up my serger for a four thread overlock. I also like to piece using a four thread overlock. And I'm just guiding the right edges, edges of my strips along the right edge of the plate on my serger. So first off, I started with a chain cover foot because I knew I was going to do that quilting. But now I switched over to that overlock stitch, that four thread overlock. It's going to go really fast and really efficient. And it's just another way that I love to do piecing on my serger. So you have choices. All the strips are pieced together now and it's time to press. Pressing definitely sets us up for success. And you'll notice that I'm pressing my seams in one direction and then I also give it a press on top. Now you won't see me pressing throughout the video because I'm just going to um, tell you now to press each time. It's going to definitely give you a, a more beautiful outcome. So here are the strips that we surged together. We've pressed them. And here I'm grabbing my batting. Now my batting pieces I've already pre-cut. But basically what you want to do is you want that batting rectangle, you want the height of the batting to be a little longer than what your three strips are. Okay? And then the width of the batting is going to be wider than your center square. So here again, I'm just trimming the three strips from the jelly roll a bit wider than the width of my batting, which again, I already determined that that batting strip is wider than the square and taller than the three rows of the jelly rolls. Keep them in mind, your jelly rolls might be a little bit narrower or wider than the ones I used in my video. So you can kind of make those choices as you go. So here I have my two strips. I've already cut them now. I've cut the long strip into two strips. So I'm gonna place one of those strips underneath my square right sides together. And notice how the length of that strip is definitely wider than the square. And I chose to start my first side on the top of the square where the center of the jelly roll strips are running up and down. Then I placed the piece of uh, my upper piece of jelly roll that I just pieced right sides down on the top and then I grabbed my batting piece and placed it on top of the last jelly roll section. And we're going to do this over and over again so by the time we get through you're going to really understand this process. 
and I've got them all clipped in place. Now, one thing that's going to be really important is that you have all of those layers, all of those layers together. So when you start surging, you want to make sure you're catching all of the layers. And I'm just going to, once again, every time I seam, uh, whether it be my jelly roll strips or my batting along with my jelly roll strips, I'm going to line that right edge up with the edge of the throat plate. So here I'm just taking the front, the batting in the back, and I just brought it up. And here, look, I'm gonna show you on the back side, you see the, the fabric in the back. So I'm gonna give it a tug. That's just gonna help it start positioning itself. And then the batting and then the top edge. Again, I'm gonna press every time I do this step. It's definitely gonna set me up for success. It's gonna look much more accurate. And it's gonna help you also make sure that when you add your next pieces that you're going to catch all of those layers so we can keep those layers to the same height to the same dimension just going to give you great accuracy when we do our pressing so here we have our center square with our first side already seamed on it once again that top that batting and then the back section is laying flat there you go up against my my little mat there okay and I'm just kind of showing you the front and the back now I'm going to grab my ruler and my rotary cutter. Now after we had quilted our center square, I cut all four edges nice and straight. So now when we start trimming our first side up, we're going to use one side of the center square to align, to have a straight line to align where we want to trim the outer edges of side one. You'll notice how I just align the ruler along the right edge of the center square. Okay, so our sides are straight, but you'll notice I have batting sticking out, right? So now we're going to do a trim, and you'll see me kind of finagle with it and kind of uh, just make it go exactly where it needs to go. I'll check the back side to make sure I have the bottom layer, um, not stretched, but extended to the length to where when I trim, I'm going to be trimming all of that excess batting. See how now in the front and the back, you're just going to see your jelly roll strips. All right, now here's just a picture. I find that if I would have numbered from the very beginning, it would have made it really easier. So here I'm just showing you, I have some post-it notes. And so in the center, I've noticed the center, those, those strips are running up and down. It's what I call number one. And then below it is the one that we just added okay so we have number two and then to the left we're going to add number three and then to the top across there I'm going to call that number four and then on the right now I'm going to number five and then number six we're basically actually starting with the centerpiece and then we're adding in a clockwise manner so we're going to go on top of the center square and then we'll go to the right each time. So kind of like a log cabin, maybe sort of there concept, but we're gonna start with the center square and then again, we're gonna just continue to add all the way around. Here I'm gonna grab my next strip of batting. Notice that this strip of batting is longer than the length of the center and that side that we just placed on there. And Allowing that to be wider just gives you wiggle room to where if you mess up a little bit, you won't be right at the edge. It'll be really easy to make it straight because you'll just trim it straight as you go along. Once again, I'm just grabbing me three strips, taking them to my serger. I'm going to place them right sides together and serge down each long edge with those edges right along the plate of my serger. So if you're doing this on your sewing machine, you just consistently decide on your seam allowance. I would say you definitely might want a healthy quarter of an inch. That way, it's just going to be really easy for you to grab uh, the strips, which are going to be really easy because it's just fabric, fabric, and fabric. But when you start incorporating your batting along with that, then you're getting a little thicker. So I think it's just a little easier to have a nice healthy quarter of an inch. So maybe you want to go three-eighths of an inch. That way you're not taking too much out of your jelly rolls each time. So now we have these all surged together once again. We'll take it over to our, our surface, our cutting surface. We'll do a little comparison. 
I want to make sure I have enough that runs the width of that batting piece and then I'm going to cut it in half and that's going to give me two a top and a bottom that are equal sizes so here we go so now you have the center so the way I numbered it I, num I numbered the center number one so I'm going to re refer to it like that so number one and the number two and so now we're adding number three and again here my fabric is really generously wider than I need it to be so if you want to trim yours a little narrower than I have here I'm trimming it away you know you can do that as you go so now we have that bottom piece right sides to right sides and then I'm placing the top piece right sides to right sides and I just flipped it over and trimmed and now we're gonna lay our batting on the top and clip it all in place we'll take it back to our serger and now it's time to serge all three of those layers our back our batting and our top and our quilt sandwich that we've already started is sandwiched in between there so you got quite a few layers going on now there we go so now we'll flip it up flip the back up and you'll notice again every time you're gonna have the batting right in the center so the center is side one then side two, side three, we just finished, and I pressed it nice and neat. And you'll notice how kind of on my ends they look a little bit, maybe a little bit wonky, but I'm gonna trim it all up nice and neat. So once again, I'm gonna grab my rotary cutter and my ruler. I'm gonna align a section on the previous area that I know is straight, and then use that as a guideline to trim straight the extension that we just added, the side that we just added. This is a great quilt, a great um, one to use if you're doing maybe some charity quilts. Or if you don't have a jelly roll and you want to use up tons of scrap and scraps and you just want to cut them into strips, you can do that also. Or you can coordinate cord fabrics that you want to match and use this technique also. All right, so now we're trimmed all nice and neat. So we've got number one is, is center number two and number three and now we're adding number four so there's my batting strip you'll notice that it's wider than the area that we want to place it in and now I'm grabbing the three more jelly roll strips the funnest thing was getting to the point to where um, deciding on which strips I wanted to grab so yeah it would really be easy for you to just throw them all in a bag possibly and just grab them without looking and then I'm going to take that long strip and just fold it over to determine how to see if I have enough for both sides and see I still have enough for both sides and if you want to um, save fabric which which is what I'm doing here you'll notice how on the right side right there I'm just going to trim off that extra now and I'm going to use that first piece as my guideline for the other two jelly roll strips for this side and I'm just going to place them all together and then give those other two pieces a trim. I've made this quilt more than once and what I tend to do all those pieces that I'm not using I just I just keep those and save those and I use those to do some bindings later on. Okay here we go once again we're just going to surge those seams fast fast really fast because I speeded it up a little bit right don't we all wish we could sew that fast and be accurate? Okay, here we go. Those are all surged together. Folding them in half. Keep in mind, I already pressed them. You just didn't get to see me press them this time. And this is the side that we're going to place it on. It's definitely wider than where I need it to go. And so now I'm going to cut down the fold, the folded center of my long strips. In a place one I kind of you'll notice me kind of looking and deciding which fabric I want to be up against that previous side that we're surging it onto so you'll kind of see me look at that every once in a while and so when I decide then I just go ahead and clip a little bit to get the back side held in place 
later on in the video, you'll notice that I'll say, hmm, I'm just going to clip one towards the end, one towards the beginning. And then as I start layer mat layering them and clipping them, I don't have to take all the clips on and off. So you'll see that as we go along. So here we go. Oh, right. I'm already starting to realize it, right? <laughs> one clip on the end and one clip on the beginning. Right sides down for that strip and then place our batting on top. And now we'll go ahead and secure all of our layers. So you have your back, you have your existing quilt sandwich in the middle, and then you're going to have your top right sides down and then your batting on top. And our quilt is going to start growing and growing quite quickly. There we go. Again, it's real important. You keep all of those edges even. Now let's go ahead and serge that seam. And just be consistent every time with your seam allowance. That's why I just allowed my fabrics to guide along the right edge of the plate. Okay? Now, I'm not sure that this was side three, so just disregard that. So here, the center. I'm calling one and then two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. That was side four. So just kind of disregard that. Got it pressed. I'm securing it from the top and from the bottom. And now we're going to trim those sides. So we'll have it straight along that previous edge and then trim. I'm just going to rotate it around and do the same thing on the opposite side. And now we're going to trim across to where the batting extends. And once we get through trimming that, from the front to the back, we'll just give it a check and make sure that our edges are fabric and there's still no batting extended. If there's any more batting still extended, then go ahead and trim it a little bit more. So here's our next piece of batting strip. Notice that now that's even longer than the next side that we're going to attach it to. So I'm just checking that out. Grabbing some more strips in just a second. So again, I'm just going to kind of see, hmm, do I have enough to go one more time? And I actually do. So you're going to see me grab three more strips, just three, one, two, three. Because that full strip is still long enough. Those three strips in one full length are still long enough to serge together and then fold in half and cut and place on the next side. So they'll still be long enough with all of those for our next side. So let's put those seams together. It's a real repetitive process. So once you do a project like this, it's going to be really easy for you to do another one. I tend to be a mass producer. I've made quite a few of these now. So again, I'm just picking it up. Look how pretty. We have it nice and pressed, still pressing along the way. Nice and pretty from the front to the back. Yes, pressing sets us up for success. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to position our pieces once again. I know it's going to be long enough to have a top and a bottom, so I'm going to cut it apart on the fold. And then I'll kind of count as I come around, but you'll see now I haven't added anything to that right edge. But again, if you actually put your numbers and just count the center as number one, and then as you continue, do your, your, your post-it notes with those numbers, it'll actually help you from getting confused. I got a little confused when I started doing this the first time. So now I have that bottom piece, right sides to right sides on the back of my quilt. There we go. Now we'll get our top piece, right sides to right sides. And then we'll get our layer of batting. And again, it's just really important that you have all of your layers 
edge to edge before you start serging, before you serge or stitch, however you're putting yours together, because you don't want any of those pieces to slip out of the seam. Okay, now we've got that done. Give it a press, nice and neat. And like I said, I'm very generous on my outer edges. When I teach a class, I tend to be over generous because every once in a while, you know, sometimes we're in a in a big group, we can just we all think a little differently. So I like to <laughs> I like to incorporate extra wiggle room in a class. So I did give everybody a little extra to where you trim off. And now we need to trim that batting on that outer edge so it all matches up to the edges of the jelly roll. And once again, once we do this, it is important for you to flip it over and look at the opposite side. If you have some batting still extended out, see like I did right there, you'll want to go in there and trim looking at that side. Because you do, you want to make sure you are straight and you have fabric to the edge on each side. And by doing that, you ensure the fact that when you go back to your serger or your sewing machine, that you're going to be catching all of those layers. You won't have a little bit of batting extended because you didn't have enough fabric to go all the way to the edge. And that is another reason why pressing sets you up for success for this process. Here I have more, more strips. Again, we're now becoming a pro at this process. Now, it, it kind of bothered my creative eye. You'll, you'll notice here in a little bit, I grabbed one of those ginghams and it's a bit, um, it's a little bit wonky the way it was cut on the jelly roll. So you're going to see that in that plaid, that little, not plaid, but that little check pattern that it's going to look a little crooked. So if you're a person that something like that bothers, then you wouldn't want to pull from that jelly roll strip. Just leave that one maybe for a binding or something to that effect. Okay, so now we're just coming back around on our next side, placing our bottom right sides up giving it a clip, making sure we're edge to edge, placing our top right sides down, and then our batting on top of the top. Your batting is always going to lay on the wrong side of your top piece. Okay, now we'll take it back to the serger. We're going to serge all of those layers. So I want to make sure you've caught all of those layers. I tend to kind of give it a check and make sure I've caught them all. And now, once again, I'm just giving it a press. And if you'll notice when my words pop up, side five, it's not really considering the center. I started with the, the edge as number one, what the first side that I added to the center as number one. But anyways, don't let the don't let the numbers there trip you up because you're going to just start kind of going round and around and continue adding. Getting those edges trimmed and getting the top edge trimmed flush with the edge of your jelly roll. And you'll notice how the bottom edge of my ruler is lining up on that previous side. And that's just going to help keep it straight as we're squaring it up on, as we're making it a nice straight cut. One thing I, you know, I, I love to teach, and I'm not a fussy teacher, but one thing I fuss about is rotary cutter, rotary cutting um, rules, right? So anytime I'm in class, I always make sure I say, okay, everyone, don't lay a rotary cutter down if that blade is open. I think it's just a really good practice to not do because you can have a little accident. So again, I was just kind of showing you here where the plat, where the uh, the check does look a little crooked, but that's just the way the jelly roll was cut with that pattern. If that bothers you, then just don't use that one. Again, I'm grabbing my next strip. It's long, it's definitely wider or longer, however you want to say that, uh, than the next side. So you're going to select, we're going to select six full strips here and we'll trim them to the length of the batting. But and remember, my batting is cut quite a bit wider than the width that we need it to be. So that's going to definitely give me that extra amount to make sure 
that I want these short whenever I'm placing them together for my next side. So here's my six strips. And the reason why we need to do six strips is because now it's going to take three strips for the top side and three strips for the bottom side. So no longer can we get a top and a bottom out of one strip. And then I realized at this point that for the next side that I was going to do, it was also going to take that same length to go along that next side. So I went ahead and pulled out those, I went ahead and pulled out six more jelly roll strips. So I went ahead and decided which fabrics I wanted to use. And you'll see me go ahead and trim all of those pieces to the same length. But as you continue forward in your process and making the project, then you can determine the length that you're going to need for each side before you get ready to do that side. I just found that it was much easier that I cut as I went. A little less thinking because you can visually compare the length of each side that you're going to place it on and then determine those lengths of your jelly rolls so you don't necessarily say I need 10 of them at this length or I need you know six or in in those increments of three so just deciding your lengths as you go allows you to just be a little less a less a little less oriented to uh, determining exact measurement All right, so now we have all of those strips ready to be surged together. And this time I went ahead and just did some um, strip piecing. I went ahead and surged all the sets that I needed for the sixth side and the seventh side. So the next two sides that I'm going to attach these to, I'm going to go ahead and just power sew those together. Here we go. We have them all done. So that's one. That's two. So that's going to fit one side. And then here's the other two. And now we're just going to go back through our process of layering our strips, our tops and our bottoms, and our battings, and our quilt sandwich together. So bottom, right sides up. We'll slip a few clips in there. And again, I've got fabric extending off to the left and the right side, so it doesn't, so it's not exact. Easier for my trimming. And now we got our top edge. I'm going to place it right sides down, and then my layer of batting on the top. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and get it surged. So we surged it, and now I went ahead and put it on without you seeing. But now we're really getting into the process, so understanding kind of how this is going. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six already attached. And then the next edge that I'm going to add on is the side that I've labeled for number seven. So if you want to count your center as number one, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Just number it how it makes you feel more comfortable. So now I'm going to go to my next side and that was the one that I already had prepared those strips together. So here we have it layered once again and now we're surging it all together and at this point we could do this process in our sleep. Alright so number seven's on over there it's already attached and I'm doing some trimming. And we're going to continue that process until all of those sides are attached. So my next side, put it all together and attach it. At this point, you've seen me do it over and over again, so I figured I'd go ahead and kind of get a little faster on you so I wouldn't bore you. Here we go. Once again, we're trimming the sides and the top, just like we did before. All 
right, I think we have one more side to add. So in my pattern, I had all together, I had like nine, cut, if I'm counting that center square. So now I'm adding number nine. And that's where my project, where my, my design for my pattern ends. We're going to have um, nine sections per se. And again, I'm just determining how long it needs to be to go across and then have a little extra. And so I'll need to cut all of those strips, all six strips, and sit, stitch all of this together, serge all of those together. And then we're going to make our sandwich once again. So I said earlier to it's really important, important whenever you're layering those edges together for your whole fabric sandwich concept that you do, once you, once you get it surged on with your batting and everything and your fabric sandwich in the middle, when you pull those pieces up, you want to look at your edges and make sure you have cap, you've caught all of your seams because if you haven't, you'll see batting, but that just definitely means you have a hole. So at that point, if you have a hole, you want to make sure you take care of um, securing that hole before you go on to the next side. Because then it's not really going to be that easy. You'll have to do quite a bit of ripping. And so with this whole design, I like the fact that as we serge or as we stitch, whichever one you've decided to do, we're, we're actually quilting this because every three strips we have a seam from the top to the bottom so if you are a person who doesn't always want to do a whole lot of quilting this is a great way to put something together because our seams when we're attaching them all together those are serving as our quilting our quilting rows are just the rows that are going to hold it all together so when you wash it it's not going to separate in the center so it's it's giving you the security of some mock type quilting, but actually it's just seams that you're taking that's holding it all together and your distance from seam to seam isn't that far apart. So it's really going to keep the whole quilt secure as you wash it in with the wear and the tear on it. Here we go, our last side. Now, once again, if you want to make this as a bed style, you know, just kind of start with a rectangle in the middle and and continue to go around and make your changes in your lengths and your widths of your strips and then just continue to do it and do it until you have it to the size that you might want it to be but starting with a rectangle in the middle is going to allow it to fit more of um, whatever bed cover you might want to choose now maybe you get to the point to where you don't want to keep adding around all four sides because you need it to be longer from the top to the bottom well then just start adding from the top and to the bottom and don't continue to add on the sides. So this design really has a lot of versatility. So I know y'all are all creative people out there and the first thing you start seeing when you see a project is how can you adjust it to do something that you want to do. So hopefully in my whole process you've gotten some inspiration and definitely some education and some design understanding and it sparks some ideas in you. Okay, so I'm all finished. I trimmed all four of my outer edges nice and neat. And I set up my serger for that wave stitch. And now I'm just stitching that wave stitch on all four edges. So when I go down the first edge, I think I'm going to come all the way off. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and come all the way off and then I'm going to clip it. And then I'm just going to come down the next side. Okay, you can definitely do it like that or you can turn a corner. We'll go down this side and when we get to the corner, I'll show you how to turn a corner with your serger. When we get to the end, I'm going to stop about one stitch before I'm off. I'm going to raise my presser foot, tweak the thread towards me a little bit, and that allows me to bring the fabric straight back. I'll pivot, turn it around, and then I'm going to start about one stitch onto the fabric. And my blade is just skimming the right edge of the fabric. And when I turn a corner like that, I always like to start with all of my edges of my quilt or whatever I'm going around trimmed very straight and flush to the edge. Okay so now that we're finished we have some tails we want to hide so I'm going to show you how to do that. So the tail is about two or three probably about three inches that gives you enough um, 
room to wiggle that thread through. And the needle that I'm using is a Havel's double-eyed needle. And notice that I've just turned the end of the tail over to where it's more of a loop and not just those straight edges of the serger tails. And that helps me get it through the eye of the needle easier. And then I'm just going to gently pull it through the back of the stitch. And then once I get it out the bottom there, I'm going to go ahead and slip my finger into the loop and then give it a gentle tug. One of those tails, one of the side is going to be loose and allows me to pull it through and clip off my extra tail. So there we have our corners finished. You'll just do that wherever you have tails. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the tutorial. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have my Facebook group, my Instagram, and my YouTube channel noted here at the end. So definitely pop over there, like, join, subscribe, and hopefully I will see you next time on the next tutorial.